So I think you can think of this as a uh, public service announcement. I want you to remember, you know, any movie where someone's about to walk into a trap and just a minute or two before that trap is sprung, someone will say, something doesn't seem right. Well, that's your intuition, or allegedly, the intuition of the actor or the character, telling him that something's about to go terribly wrong. And this really works well when we're in physical danger. I think we have a sense when someone's watching us or something bad is about to happen, we can feel it coming. But when your brain is clouded with new romance, it's very difficult for those natural instincts to come through. And so it's entirely possible that you may find yourself in the middle of a trap that was sprung with your complete knowledge and maybe even your agreement. And you don't realize that you're in really big trouble until well after you're already caught. So that's what I want to talk about today. Human beings have evolved over millions of years to have certain innate self-preservation systems where we can identify a threat at an early stage and our brain will immediately alert us and we can avoid danger or potential death. For example, when I'm walking the dogs, we frequently come across snakes on the trail. And I don't know if I've trained the dogs to be weary of the snakes or if they just already knew that, but we all stand back and let the snake cross or we all avoid contact with the snake. And the dogs seem to do it all by themselves. So they seem to have this self-preservation thing working for them too. Um, the problem is, as men, our environment is changing all the time. And things that were not threats in the past become threats today and we don't have the tools or the skills innately to identify those threats and avoid them. So today I want to talk about when to know that you need to walk away from a potential disastrous relationship. How do you identify that situation and how critically important it is to walk away? And I am going to share with you one of my dating disasters, just as an example, because this is one of those things that, yeah, you gotta live up to your mistakes. And I certainly made a couple, uh, probably more than a couple, but here's one. This was actually on, off a dating app, of course, so that's your first red flag. That's the first indication of danger. And um, I could tell this woman was probably using some kind of filter. Her skin just looked a little too smooth for someone her age. I think she was, like right around 50, and I was, this was like maybe three or four years ago. This was shortly after um, the uh, separation. And, um, and it was during the pandemic. So it must have been in 2020 or 2021 in that range. But anyway, um, nice conversation. She seemed relatively nice on the phone. Uh, we uh, met in a very nice part of town at a very nice restaurant. And um, of course we had to eat outdoors and stuff like that. Um, well-dressed, well-appointed, you know, not quite as pretty as the pictures, but not bad. You know, again, you just have to keep it all in mind. You know, you're talking about a 50 year old woman, nicely built, nice body, nice shape, um, seemed to have a nice personality, at least initially. Um, definitely coming on strong, like, really, really strong. And not that it matters a whole lot, but she worked for the Justice Department as an attorney, which should have been a red flag too, but I didn't know that at the time either. Like that, that was probably something I should have been aware of because lawyers tend to be, no offense to any lawyers out there, tend to be just a little bit more difficult to do business with than normal people. But I digress. Um, So the relationship evolves over the course of a few weeks and you know, there's some heavy petting and kissing, but nothing, you know, we didn't go all the way on anything. It was, was very intensely kind of high school-like, you know, affection. Um, but it was nice. 
Um, but I'm picking up little signals along the way that she's got some issues. She talks about doing um, shadow work and stuff like that, which I had never heard of before. And I tend to be you know, pretty in tune with any developmental, personal development, self-help, spiritual stuff. I read a lot of that. So shadow work was something I was not totally familiar with. And it made me just a little concerned that you know, there were some shadows in there that maybe I needed to be aware of. Um, and she started telling me about her ex and all their trouble and all the difficulties that they had. And just a word of warning, women, if you're watching this, yeah, we don't really want to know about your ex, honest to God. And guys, nobody wants to know about your ex either. There's no point in going in too deep on any of that stuff. But there were little yellow flags popping up all over the place. Anyway, so she wanted to meet my daughters who, who were still living at home with me, both at the same time. And... Um, I thought, okay, I'll pick up some food and you can come over and we'll, we'll do that. Um, and I remember just having this sense that something was really, really wrong with that idea. And so I called her up and I said, look, I'm not sure this is a good idea at this stage in our relationship. Let's just hold off on that and maybe we can do it again some other time. Well, she immediately took offense, like maybe I was hiding or lying or doing something. And she started accusing me of... Um, being dishonest with her or um, not being straight with her or perhaps even cheating on her. And all these accusations started coming rapid fire. And I started to feel that, that heat, you know, that like the, someone's turning up the heat on me and I'm this need to respond and defend myself. And I thought, wait a second, why am I defending myself under these circumstances? I've done nothing wrong. But I guess her innate lawyer just kicked in and started, you know, coming after me with all these accusations. And I told her that I never wanted to see her again. And then she started blowing up my phone after I hung up. I said, you know, like, I don't think this is going to work. I think we need to move on. This isn't going to work out. I can tell that, you know, we're just not a good match. And she immediately started blowing up my phone, sending me text messages. And I finally had to block her on, you know, all of my contacts, including my email. So she couldn't reach me anymore because she was just losing her mind that I was ending the relationship at this stage. Now, granted, nothing serious has happened yet. Like, there has been no commitment. There has been no sex. There's been no, you know, taking it to that next level. Just been a handful of dates, some kissing and fooling around, but nothing, nothing serious. And she just lost her mind when I canceled that date where she was gonna meet my kids because I just felt intuitively that maybe it was not the right time to be, my kids were teenagers. So it wasn't like they were gonna be, you know, unduly impressed with, you know, me having another a woman in the house. But it just seemed like the wrong, the wrong thing to do at the time. Anyway, walking away under those circumstances, I feel like I dodged a bullet, you know? And I actually kind of had nightmares afterwards because I knew that she was an attorney for the Justice Department. And I knew that gave her access to enormous amounts of data. And I'm sure that she could track me down. And I'm sure that she could have, um, I don't know. I, I started imagining all these trumped up charges and you know, and these guys in a black van coming and picking me up and putting a hood over my head. You know, you start to get a little out of control with the, like, how bad this could get. But, yeah, I started looking over my shoulder a lot for a while. You know, I started thinking, hmm, I don't know what I said or did that caused her to lose her mind so much. But, oh my God, it did. Anyway, I guess the thing is, my point here is, you know, if someone provides you with a beautiful present, you know, you, you get home and there's a beautiful package sitting on your doorstep and it's just wrapped beautifully and you take it into your house and you open it up, you know, and on the card it says someone who loves you very much. And inside that box is a coiled up rattlesnake ready to bite. You're going to shut that box and get rid of it as quickly as you can. And I think identifying when that pretty box is holding a coiled up rattlesnake, and maybe box isn't the right word to use there, but you know what I mean. When that package has a, <laughs> has a coiled up rattlesnake inside, you just need to know you gotta get away as quickly as possible. And the truth of the matter is, there were a handful of yellow flags. I don't remember them all, because it was just a short term relationship, it only lasted a few weeks. But I do remember, like, as I was driving away from her place a couple times thinking, Mm, I don't know if this is right, but there was still that little voice inside me saying, yeah, but you can probably get some. You can probably, like she's got a hot body and she seems pretty, pretty kinky. I bet she'd be a lot of fun. So I was having that thought, but she was thinking something much, much more long-term than I was. You know, I, I was thinking, 
mm, this could be a little, a fun little fling. And I think she was thinking this was going to be the love of her life. And we were not on the same page with that. And so identifying those situations and the way I think that you can, um, defend yourself or you can provide yourself with some level of security is getting really clear about what your boundaries are. You know, what is your frame and what are you willing to put up with and not willing to put up with and not allowing there to be any, um, you know, digress from that. You, you've got to stay on track with that. You can't allow yourself to retreat from that position. No matter what the circumstances are, you've just got to dig in your heels and say, this is something I am unwilling to accept. And once you get to that point, if someone crosses that line, whatever that line is, you know this relationship is not going to work. So my advice to you here is get clarity about what it is you want in a relationship and from a woman and know what you're unwilling to put up with before the relationship starts. I think if you have clarity going in beforehand, well, you can identify those dangers much, much more quickly and pull the plug on it way before anything gets to a point where it might get, um, get serious and become dangerous to you. Because as you know, as a relationship progresses and you start getting more and more physical, um, there's this unspoken rule that now you owe her something more, you know, and you don't want to get into that place where she feels like you owe her something and you don't because that's where you're going to run into trouble. And the last thing you need is an angry woman who's got a grudge. I mean, women are willing to do some crazy, crazy stuff if they feel like they've been wronged and you do not want to be on the bad side of that, especially if that woman is a cop or a federal agent, God forbid. All right, you guys, that's what I got for you today. Just a short video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please, uh, you know, leave me some comments. Um, remember to like and subscribe and uh, stay healthy. And if you can, stay single.